budget gem or budget bust. Um, just want to do a couple of quick things here for you. I know some of you has asked um, previously if you could kind of take a little tour of my setup here in my test area for um, testing amplifiers. Um, so in the spirit of the new year, I thought I'd give you a quick little tour here of um, what I have here in my test area slash office. Um, so you can kind of see with some of the equipment that I've got and as well as talk about some of the upgrades that I've got for this coming year. Um, I apologize if I'm a little gimpy right now. I just came off of a rotator cuff surgery. That was not a lot of fun. I do not recommend it for any of you out there. Um, but while I've got a little bit of time off from work here, I thought I would quickly do this video for you so you can know with uh, what I'm working with. All right, so um, let's move on to the tour and let me show you what we've got. All right, first things first, this is of course the actual bench slash desk that we work with for doing the amplifiers. Um, this is an amp that I've got scheduled to test here um, that you'll see in the next couple of weeks. Um, you can see this is the AMM1, needs no introduction. That's what I actually use for now for the amp dynos. And when I talk about what I've got coming up for the future, um, in about 12 weeks we will no longer be using the AMM1. We are going to be moving on to a AD1. So I've ordered an amp dyno from Steve Mead. It'll be here in about 12 to 16 weeks. It's getting hand built right now for me. Um, so big investment into the channel. Um, other things, of course, to do the certified numbers. I use the DD1 that you see right there. Um, also, I do that for setting all the gains in all of my cars and trucks. Um, these are a couple of new additions here. We have, of course, our new clamp meter. Ooh. Some of you said, all right, what's the amps that's pulling on in the inrush um, while these tests are going on? And uh, before I didn't have a clamp meter. Now I do. It's a very nice, cheap Amo brand, but uh, it seems to work pretty well. I've used it on two tests that you're going to see here in upcoming videos. Also, you kept on saying, please show me the voltage during the tests. Don't mind my son's uh, uh, Pinewood Derby car. <laughs> so, uh, this one here is, of course, the DKM Ha Ha. Ha Ha Ha. Yeah, awesome name. Um, this is my new multimeter that I'll be using for showing you the voltages um, as the tests are going on. Of course, until we get the 81 in. And some of you said, okay, what do I use for resistance to keep it so stable? Well, those are these jobs here. Sorry for the mess. So these are breaking resistors. So right here I've got uh, two 4 ohm resistors and one 2 ohm resistor. So you can see right there, these are 1000 watt breaking resistors. This one in particular is a 2 ohm. You might be saying, why do I use these? Well, these are the exact same that you're going to find in the AD1. Um, they, he used several banks. Tony D'Amore uses a D'Amore, uses a bunch of these inside the AD1. He might not be willing to admit it. I'm sure he will, but um, when I saw a video of the 81 and the top opened up, it had banks of these bad boys in there. So these came in, and this is what I used to simulate loads. So there's no box rise. Over here, of course, these are what you're not seeing here from the front. When I need to simulate, or I want to demonstrate music, when I test the amps to see how musical they are, which I don't show in the videos, but I do test to make sure how they are. I use these triangle tower speakers. They are not cheap, but they uh, they replicate the best environment possible for the sound. And of course, I talk about them a lot. These here are my wonderful RD Power 2KW power supplies. Of course, they're twin power supplies that both will generate up to uh, sustained 150 amps a piece and 200 amps bursting out. Um, that's the max that they'll possibly do. That's their peak. Um, they'll do that. They're adjustable from uh, 9 volt to 14.4 volt. Um, so I usually keep them maxed out. 
I always hear from several of you, you don't run zero gauge wire, you don't run zero gauge wire. Well, that's a lot of shenanigans, as you can see here, with these new, new concept connectors. That is zero gauge wire. And that zero gauge, well, let's see, why aren't you fading over? There we go. There is zero gauge wire there. So two runs of zero gauge wire. And of course the zero gauge wiring connects over here into a pair of uh, tool makers dual zero gauge to zero gauge outputs and of course I uh, I use a distribution block to get them out there and what's powering this whole setup a Pioneer Premier deck um, it's got multi, multi outputs you know six channels all four volt and of course, uh, when I want to play highs and not just do uh, subwoofer lows, um, I will use this Crown X1000, which is <laughs> an awesome amplifier. Highly recommend the Crown X1000s, the X1000s, and the X series. Um, they're not made anymore, technically, because those were a brand for Guitar Center, um, but they still make them as the XLIs, which is where you can buy many of them. Those are beasts. Highly recommend them. And of course, coming down this way, oh, you said I need more power. Well, what do I have for you here? Three 14 volt D1400s, all done up, ready to go. So that's all new for the channel coming this year. And of course, they are connected by the PSC60 power supply right there so more than enough juice for all your testing needs all right folks that's it for the test area um, as I said a lot of good things going on with the channel coming up this year um, a lot more amp tests coming um, a, a lot of improvements happening in the test area that you all have asked for um, more power uh, no one asked for it, but yeah, I'm even getting the 81 amp dyno, so the video production quality will get better. <laughs> um, you asked for being able to see the voltage, I showed you, that's coming. Um, you're going to see those in the test coming up probably next week. Um, you asked to see the amps, the, the amps are current, uh, the current pole that these amps are pulling. We got that coming. Um, just want to say thank you all for my subscribers that have gotten to the channel those of you that have been watching the videos um, I really appreciate it when I order the first amps to test on here a lot of them were my own curiosity as to what they really put out um, but I said you know what let me see let me put a couple out there let me see if people will watch them and will they want more of them and I think based on the last several videos that have gone out, yeah, I think that you do. And um, I appreciate that. I, I do this channel for you because a lot of you out there are in the same situation I was in um, 20 years ago. You know, I was a teenager, early 20s, didn't have a lot of money on, on hand. Um, I drove... <laughs> I drove a... 86 Olds Cutlass Supreme in which I knew I would cr I crossed the 100 mile mark in my car because I now had to, oil, uh, had to put in two quarts of oil to keep driving it. It burned so much oil that uh, two quarts every 100, that was the thing. Um, and how I kind of got through driving that car um, without kind of losing my mind as to how bad it was, was by improving the audio system that was in it. And when I first set out to do that, I, mean, I got ripped several times over. Um, I got, <laughs> I had a Boss Amp as my first amplifier, like many of you out there have had, and uh, that turned out to be pure junk. Um, and then I tried to order a Kenwood Amp on, off eBay when eBay was brand new and I got totally ripped off on that one. The amp didn't work, didn't have any of the wiring that came with it. Those who used Molex plugs, they didn't they didn't come with the amp. Um, the thing was complete and utter crap. Um, 
and then also too then I was like okay let me I went out and then I bought a um, bought a Hyphonic Z600 and that actually was a pretty good amp at the time I mean that's what API still owned them um, that was a really nice amp but I didn't know how to install it properly uh, it didn't burn out um, but I didn't get as much out of it as I could because you know I probably should have had four gauge running to it and I only had eight gauge and that wasn't enough and there were a lot of things I did wrong at the beginning um, that hopefully by doing this channel you guys can avoid you know you can avoid making the mistake on an amplifier and then I don't have to see you on you know the base head forum of Facebook um, trying to sell your mistakes and trying to get it to somebody else so you're like I get it if you made a mistake and you bought a Planet Audio 4k um, don't try to push it on somebody else please I'm gonna be right there to tell them that's not really a 4k amp I'm sorry I can't help myself um, but hopefully with you watching this channel um, and seeing some of these amp tests that we're doing I'm trying to keep everything sub $300 um, you can see what's good out there and what's bad and make your own decisions um, another thing that I'm going to talk about because that real quickly here is the criteria for going forward as to what I'm going to consider a budget gem or a budget bust um, the last one so far I haven't had a criteria it's been okay if it met its ratings fantastic it's a uh, it's a budget gem woohoo great um, if it hadn't made its ratings um, you know I it, depending on what I paid I would sometimes say yeah it's a budget gem you know or budget amp um, or a straight out bust um, so I think I'm gonna use the criteria from now on so going forward if the amp meets its ratings if it paid under 300 bucks I thought going forward it was probably going to be um, it could fall into the gem category and so those will automatically get listed as a budget gem um, if it doesn't meet its ratings but if we can look at what its cost per watt is and I know that's not the best way of determining how good an amplifier is but if we're looking at how much power are you getting for how much you're spending um, I'm gonna put a benchmark out there and say if it does better than that benchmark in cost per watt I will consider it a budget gem going forward and the amp that I'm gonna call the benchmark budget gem is um, I think it's one of the better 1,000, 1,200 watt amps out there um, for under 200 bucks. I'm gonna say the um, I'm gonna go with the PPI P1000D. Um, the Car Audio Bargain 1600.1 is also a good one, but um, I think I'll go with the P1000 because it's 159 bucks, and you can get anywhere from 1200 watts to 1600 watts dynamic out of the thing. So, you know, if you go by, I'll do the exact math here, but I think it's roughly 15 cents a watt that you're paying for that, um, maybe even 10 cents a watt when you count, consider dynamic power. So we're going to set that as the bar. And we're going to say, if you can come under a cost per watt, then the PPI, then I'm going to consider you a budget gem going forward. All right. Um, regardless of you know you take the cobalt and all that was roughly you know 12 cents per watt budget gem you know or you take the rock fill rock fill was roughly 12 13 cents a watt certified and you know under 10 cents a watt dynamic budget gem all right um planet audio still a bust and uh yeah same thing those two american bass amps still bust sorry um Maybe you're getting close dynamic, but no, no, still bus. All right, so um, that's what I've got in store for you for this year in the channel. Um, hope that you continue to subscribe and continue to watch. I do thank you all, um, and I wish you all a happy new year. <laughs> and yes, I really am this ugly. <laughs>